My name is Anna. I'm writing a research essay for my composition class. My essay is about whether supervisors should have the right to see how employees are using the internet during work hours. In my paper, I argue that this kind of surveillance is an unfair breach of privacy. I just came from a writing center session. The tutor I worked with was pretty helpful. He asked me a lot of questions about my sources and how I thought they were functioning in my paper. He pointed out that while I do have some good sources, I haven't integrated them as well as I could have. He told me that in a few places, it's hard to know where my voice ends and the source's voice begins. Let me go to one of the places he pointed out. In this paragraph, I use a short quotation. Here's what I wrote. Employees' right to privacy in the American workplace remains a murky area of the law. Although evaluating where to draw the line between employee rights and employer powers is often a duty that falls to the judicial system, the courts have shown little willingness to intrude on employers' control over their computer networks. It is unlikely that we will see a legally guaranteed zone of privacy in the American workplace. I have included quotation marks and the author's name and a page number in parentheses, so I know I am not plagiarizing the source. The tutor said that what I have is a dropped quotation, a quotation that is just stuck in the paper without warning, and that adding a signal phrase would help to make the boundaries clearer. Why don't I go ahead and add the name of the source? In this quotation, a legal scholar named Jay Keeson makes a prediction. The tutor also told me that it's important to let readers know who sources are and what authority they have on the topic. I could add Keeson's credentials here. Then, since the word it no longer begins the sentence, I can make it lowercase. I checked my handbook for advice on using brackets to make a sentence grammatically correct. Finally, I know that if I mention an author's name in the signal phrase, I don't need to mention it again in the citation. I still need the page number, though. The signal phrase and the information in parentheses work together to form a transition from my words to my source's words, and back to my words. In another place in my essay, I put information from a source into my own words. This is called paraphrasing. Let me reread that part of my essay. As an important 2005 study indicates, the Internet ranked as the top choice among employees for ways of wasting time on the job. It beat talking with coworkers, the second most popular method, by a margin of nearly two to one. I have included a signal phrase here to introduce the paraphrased material, but I haven't cited the source by the author's last name. The Writing Center tutor reminded me that I have to include a citation even if I put information into my own words. I'll add the author's name in parentheses. Fraunheim's article appeared on a website with no page numbers. I checked my handbook again and found out that it's okay in this case not to include a page number with the author's name. In another area of my paper, I have a long quotation that I need to format in MLA style. In the lead-in sentence, I include the author's name in a signal phrase, since it's his argument that I'm paraphrasing. But, if a quotation is longer than four typed lines, I have to indent it one inch, like this. I'm going to use a colon instead of a period at the end of the lead-in sentence, because that's correct MLA style. Then I'm going to delete the quotation marks, which aren't necessary for longer indented quotations. Finally, I'm going to move the page numbers in parentheses to the right of the period. In MLA style, the parentheses go outside the final mark of punctuation, only after a long, set-off quotation. I worked with Anna in the writing center earlier today. She's a good writer, but integrating sources can be tricky. It helps to have a good handbook by your side and enough time to revise. Sometimes it also helps to come to the writing center and work with a tutor. Here are some things I tell writers to keep in mind when they use sources in their writing. A signal phrase is a group of words 
that provides a transition between your words and the words or ideas of your source. Your handbook might include a handy chart of signal phrases, like this one. This chart shows sample signal phrases and a list of verbs. Use an appropriate verb in your signal phrase. Is the source confirming or denying a claim? Merely suggesting something? Or perhaps admitting something? Think about the role your source is playing in your paper. Use brackets to make changes to quoted material. Brackets are helpful when you need to make something in the quotation clearer for your reader or simply make your sentence grammatically correct. Include an in-text citation for any words, ideas, or visuals that come from a source. An in-text citation most often includes the author's name in the signal phrase and a page reference in parentheses. Be sure to give credit to a source, even if you use your own words. You already know that direct quotations need citations. Remember that you need to credit the authors of any graphs, diagrams, or even cartoons that you borrow to help you make your own argument. Okay, well, I've got to get back to revising. I learned a lot about how to integrate sources in a college paper. If you need help with your writing, check your handbook or visit your school's writing center. Good luck using sources in the papers you write this year.